Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's event, the Life D River launch. My name is Louise Stokes. I'm from Digital Leaders, and it's our pleasure to help host today's event in this Digi Lounge. Um, so here, um, here is the broadcast and stage mode, just to give people an introduction as to what you're looking at. So everyone in the, in the room is now tuning into this one view, and here on stage, we'll shortly be hearing from our guest speakers. So in this view, you'll notice um, on the right-hand side, three tabs. We've got the general chat with the room. Uh, please use this general for general questions, ideas or flag here if you need help. Um, then we've got the participants tab, the second tab along there. And here you can scroll through and see who has joined the event today and message people directly if you want to. Um, in the top right-hand corner, you'll have your little um, initial there. And here you can update your profile and include um, potentially your LinkedIn or other information if you'd like people to connect with you. And the third tab there is Q&A. So you can send in any questions you have here and uh, the team will have a record of that and they'll be able to get back to you with any questions uh, throughout the day. And finally, um, you can raise your hand if you're wanting to use that feature uh, to um, say, put your hand up for the rest of the group. So um, it gives me great pleasure now to introduce uh, the CEO um, of NRW, Claire Pillman, who will be giving some opening remarks. So without further ado, I'll bring Claire up onto the stage. And thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you, Louise. Um, and Boradar Paub, Diochenvari Higid, Amamino Ebony Hethu, a Lanshad, a Project Life Avon de Vadri. A very warm welcome to everyone who's joined us here today for the launch of the D Life project. It's clear that our experiences during lockdown have given many of us a heightened sense of the importance of the natural environment on our on our doorsteps. So I'm really delighted to be here today for the launch of this brilliant project, which will have a transformative impact on the River Dee and its catchment. The pathways along the Dee have been some of my favourite local walks since childhood when I spent many happy hours pottering around whilst my uncle fished the river above the Horseshoe Falls. And I've been lucky in recent weeks to see at first hand where the work is proposed to restore the river and its surroundings back to their natural state with tremendous benefits for the local environment and the entire river ecosystem. This will include improvements to the river channel, and the agricultural and forest land management practices in the catchment. I'd like to thank all of those who've been involved in the huge amount of work that went into the funding bid. It's been a real team effort from some very committed, clever and dedicated people who are absolutely passionate about this river. I'd also like to thank our funding partners without whom the bid would not have succeeded. So a big thanks to Welsh Government, to the Environment, Environment Agency England, Snowdonia National Park Authority, Dua Cymru Welsh Water. Um, I know many of you are here today, so thank you very much. We're now in that really exciting phase of this project as it begins to get going. And it will be great to get lots of other organisations and individuals involved as we move forward. We look forward to working with everyone from kayaking groups, from rivers trusts, farmers and landowners, historians, local businesses, environmental NGOs, fishermen, and people like me who just love the river. And we will be building on the really good work that many organisations have done over the years to help the river thrive. From NRW, there will be a real commitment from across the organisation, from many different disciplines, from forestry and land management, water quality, fisheries, species experts, heritage and access professionals, and of course, supported by finance and comms. They will be involved in planning, advising, project delivery, monitoring of interventions, and passing on the lessons that we learn to future projects. This is a great example of how NRW lives its commitment 
to the sustainable management of natural resources in Wales. We believe this is the largest project using the SMNR principles in Wales. And whilst it will be a challenge, we are determined that this holistic approach must be taken to ensure the future sustainability of this great river and our natural environment more widely. So whilst the focus of the project is improving the habitat to support fish migration, it will have many other benefits, such as for invertebrates. And in that context, I was thrilled to learn from the team about the recent discovery of the yellow mayfly on the Dee for the first time. We encourage all of you and all others with an interest in the Dee to get involved, to get in touch with Joel Rees-Jones and the team to explore how you can, how you can take part in this, this great project. There'll be lots of opportunities, things like river walks with project staff to understand the work and the ecosystem, getting involved with fish tagging, some online events. We're looking at, at aspects of the project, for example, on some of the weir removals and Snowdonia National Park Authority are running classroom hatcheries for schools. Our social media sites are all very active and please follow the project and keep up to date with progress. Gobethio echbord wedi mwyn hai lansiad, diolcheto i partneriad a project to gyd. Thank you again to all our project partners. And at this point, I'll hand over to Joel Rees-Jones, who will be able to tell you a bit more about the detail of the project. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Claire. And Boradar Paub, Croeso Lansiad Project, Life Avon Dubdui. Heddiw dwi'n mynd y gilflino am Kenyon y prosiect efo chi, pwys i'n gweithio ar y prosiect, a beth rydyn ni'n gobeithio gyflanwy. Morning everybody and welcome to the launch of the Life D River project. Today I'm going to tell you a bit more about the project, who's going to be working on it and what we are aiming to achieve. I've just put up a presentation. You can either see myself or the presentation. If you'd like to just uh, click on the four arrows on the presentation tile, you will just see the uh, the presentation that is uh, I'll, I'll be talking about. As a bit of background to those who maybe hadn't heard about the project before, it started about two years ago when a group of staff instigated the idea of a catchment scale project. We knew then that there were multiple actions needed on the Avon Dudley or River Dee to bring some of the features of the SAC into a more favourable conservation status and the idea of a much larger scale project was born. I was participating at that early stage and I knew then that I wanted to be involved in the project in some form and I am incredibly proud to be managing it now and talking to you today. The project itself runs until 31st of December 2024 with a total budget of around 6.8 million or just over 7 million euros so it's a huge budget. Claire mentioned the project partners earlier and we are hugely grateful to them for their support both with the work and financially. It's an incredible opportunity to work cross-border on the D with the Environment Agency, assistance with specific projects from Snowdonia National Park Authority and significant financial assistance from Dual Cymru. So there'll be a team of nine of us that will be delivering the project. And these are made up of people who have great experience and specific skills in their respective roles, which you can see on the, on the screen now. All things considered, it has taken quite a while to get the team together. There's obviously been some challenges, um, but we had our first socially distanced team meeting recently, and it, it felt like a real milestone for me. I'm really excited to be working with the team and the buzz of ideas from them all really is infectious. Of course, we can't deliver something of this scale alone and there is an incredible amount of people who sit on the steering group, board of the project and also other groups uh, who offer a huge amount of support and we are really grateful to, the, to all of those people. I know there are people 
a number of people dialed into this event who've been involved in life projects before. And I'm sure they would agree that to bid and be successful in receiving life funding requires a huge amount of time and effort to be put into it. As Claire mentioned earlier, there are a number of people who've made this project happen, but special thanks must go to Sue Hearn and Helen Milband of NRW for their unrelenting hard work in the application process and the continued support of the project. And also to Nick Thomas for pushing this and other life projects around Wales. Life projects are an incredible opportunity to deliver a huge amount for the environment. As Claire mentioned, please feel free to get in touch with the team at any point. Links to social media, website, and uh, signing up to the newsletter are on the DigiLand page. Just click on those links and you'll be able to follow the project. So I've talked about the team and how we got to this stage, but moving on to the target species and habitats that the project will be looking at. So the Avon Dovedwyll Integrated Special Area Conservation, or SAC, has a number of different species and habitats that it is designated for, such as those on the screen at the minute, like the river lamprey, sea lamprey, the Ranunculian habitat, and the Atlantic salmon, amongst others. Apart from the otter, which is also a feature, all of these species are in an unfavourable conservation status following the most recent assessment. This project will work to bring these species and habitats into a more favourable status and securing them for future generations to enjoy. A recent study published on the World Fish Migration Foundation page found that worldwide migratory freshwater fish populations have declined by 76% between 1970 and 2016 and within Europe by a staggering 93%. I'll just repeat those figures. 76% decline worldwide and 93% within Europe. I'm sure you'll all agree that this almost seems an unbelievable rate of loss and is clearly unsustainable. As a result, we need to be taking action now to protect those species remaining, which is a massive element of what this project aims to do. So moving on to a slightly happier note and what we're going to do about this on the D. So there are five main objectives for the Life D River project. First of all, removing the constraints to fish migration and other species within the watercourse. Next, restoring or improving the natural processes within the river. Within any, within any ecosystem, everything is linked. If you have the natural fluvial processes and habitats, you can have the conditions for wildlife to flourish. And moving on to the land use within the catchment, we are looking to improve the agricultural and forestry management to reduce unnatural sediments and nutrients entering the SAC. Onto a species that is not a feature of the sea but highly threatened, the freshwater pearl mussel. We will initiate a rearing programme to captively rear and then release freshwater pearl mussels back into the river. Finally, the project will work with people like yourselves to establish and build long-term relationships with people who live, work and enjoy the D, ensuring that it is as many, as many people as possible know what an incredible place it is. Hopefully this provides you with an insight into the reasons and objectives of the project. So moving on to the project itself and um, what we will deliver over the next four and a bit years. A life project is made up of several actions that are laid out within the bid and these are outlined on this slide, some of which we've already completed, others will run through the lifetime and beyond of the project. Today I'm going to concentrate on the conservation, monitoring and communication actions of the project as these are the things you'll see and hear about most. Before I explain some of the work we're going to do, I just want to play a short video that was put together by Ollie Lowe, a fluvial geomorphologist at NRW. Um, I've already mentioned about the decline in freshwater migratory fish species and barriers are given as one of the reasons for this, causing delays and potential losses. Whilst these are the more obvious impacts of barriers, other processes and species, species can be impacted but on a far less visible scale. So we'd just like to play that video now.
how that video highlights the impact structures within rivers can sometimes have and the reason why there is such a drive to address these impacts where possible. So moving on to the meat of the project and what actions we are actually going to be carrying out. So the in-river habitat and river restoration work will be carried out principally by Gethin Morris and Rob Llewellyn Smith. Uh, this will focus on a number of areas which will include removing or partially removing five weirs within the catchment. And these weirs range from smaller structures on tributaries to significant large scale structures on the main river, such as those that you can see on the picture at the minute. All of these structures are redundant, but we are very conscious of the heritage around them, as Claire mentioned earlier. So we're working with partners to ensure this is secured and the story of those structures is told. I would at this point like to thank the landowners and organisations who have been working with us around these structures. We are incredibly grateful to them and their continued support of the project and look forward to work continue, continuing working with them. The first barrier that will be removed under this project is a redundant weir on the Tuerin, and work is actually starting on that next week using a local contractor. Uh, there'll be updates throughout the week on our social media. So as I said, sign up to keep up, with spe up to speed with the work that's going on there. Moving on, we'll also be constructing fish passage solutions at, further, at a further six structures. These will range from rock ramps, such as the design shown on screen at the minute, low cost bath falls and or improved lamprey passage. All of these modifications will have clear benefits through reconnecting the river for fish species, but will also improve the habitat for mammals, invertebrates, as Claire mentioned, and natural fluvial processes. And there are other additional benefits, such as improved safety for recreational users of the river at specific sites. Geth and Rob will also be carrying out, sorry, carrying out a large amount of river restoration work across the catchment, comprising of introducing material back into the river where it has been historically removed, creating a more sinuous planform where possible, removal of historic bank side protection and breaching embankments to allow the river to reconnect with its floodplain with the associated benefits to natural flood risk management as well as the species present. Moving on to the land management side of things, Thomas Wynne and Nivor Potts will be leading on this work and will be working closely with colleagues within NRW such as our forestry planners and other external organisations. Within the forestry areas managed by NRW, we'll be improving river crossings and blocking ditches to reduce the sediment loading and risk of pollution across approximately 600 hectares of forestry. Additionally, Tom and Nivor will be working with landowners and farmers to reduce the amount of sediments and nutrients entering watercourses from their land. This will be achieved through farm visits, identifying beneficial interventions and then signposting to grants to improve the conditions on the farms. They will also be working with Geth and Rob to deliver a significant amount of riverside fencing and tree planting to again reduce the introduction of sediments and nutrients, but with the additional benefit of providing greater resilience to the river in the face of future climate change. The first piece of fencing was actually started this week on the Avon Trouerin, with 650 metres being constructed, creating a large riverside corridor that you can see in the photo on the screen. We're incredibly lucky to have NRW staff at Cunnery, Cattery and Brecon with very, very specialist skills in captive rearing of freshwater pearl mussels. And they'll be assisting with the project by rearing juvenile freshwater pearl mussels back into the river Dee catchment in suitable locations once the conditions are more appropriate for them. Freshwater pearl mussels can live for over 100 years, but recruitment of juveniles on the Dee appears to be virtually non-existent, likely due to several factors, but influenced by sediment loading and pollution. As freshwater pearl mussels are such slow growing and long lived species, this will be a long term project that will likely carry on after the end of the life project. Monitoring of the project interventions is key to showing the benefits of the work we will carry out. Our monitoring lead, Rich Cove, uh, is Rich Cove and he is planning and leading on a wide range of monitoring actions throughout the lifetime and extending past the end of the project. These are going to include aerial habitat surveys to look at the changes to the habitat and species present over the lifespan of the project, fish tagging and tracking through the river system pre and post interventions, and lech fishing surveys to look at densities and population dynamics in areas, as well as use of some newer technologies, um, such as eDNA surveys, where environmental DNA is collected to establish ranges of certain species. 
Together with citizen science, hopefully involving you, we will demonstrate the positive benefits of the work carried out. We're really keen to show people some of this work in the field, as Claire mentioned. So again, follow us and we'll let people know how they can come and see some of the work when it is carried out. This could range from seeing fish tagging, watching electrofishing, or learning how to count sea lamprey reds in the river. I'm sure many of you will have heard from Megan McNutt, who is our comms officer for the project in the run up to today. She's been incredibly busy uh, and has created a comms plan for the project and will be leading the various communication and engagement events throughout the lifespan of the, of the project. Some of this work will also be carried out by our partners and in total around 50 events will be held over the lifetime of the project. We will be also working with other organisations such as the River Restoration Centre, World Fish Migration Foundation, Dam Removal Europe and other life projects to promote the work done and highlight best practice and lessons learned, which is vital. Clearly, with such a large budget to spend across a wide range of areas, it's vital we ensure it is spent in the correct way. That is also benefiting the local economy where we can through supporting small and medium enterprises. We're really lucky to have Cathy McKinley on board to oversee the procurement side of the project. She'll be bringing together suppliers of specialist equipment into frameworks and ensuring all procurement rules are followed. Also on the financial side of the project is Keris Jones, who leads on the financial reporting elements of the project, ensuring all of our claims are correct, as well as a multitude of other pieces of work. There are four clear outcomes of the project, as you can see from this slide. I've talked about the restoration of natural riverine processes and morphology and the benefits that can bring. As a result of this, we want to see the species under the designation to move towards a more favourable conservation status. There'll be a reduction in pollution from the land management work, and all of these will help improve salmon and other fish population, populations, such as the grayling in this picture and the variety of fish, fish species you saw in the show reel at the beginning of this launch. As you can tell, this is a far reaching and diverse project. I hope that brief summary has given you an insight into some of the work we will be seeing on the river over the next few years. And we as a team look forward to meeting many of you on the riverbank at our events. Jochen Vauram Grando, thank you for listening. There will now be two short videos um, followed by a few words from uh, Deputy Minister Hannah Blevin, the Senate member for Dellen. The first video is from angling author and broadcaster Will Millard, who I spent a very wet day on the river looking at some of the works, as you'll probably see in the video. And the second video is from Sir David Henshaw, chair of NRW's board. Hi guys, my name is Will Millard. I'm a BBC presenter and an angling author, and I am so sorry that I can't be there today for the launch of this super exciting new life project on the River Dee. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be involved. I've been talking to the project manager, Joel, about all of the plans that you guys have got coming up. And I just think it is absolutely fantastic to see some of the things that are gonna happen on this river with the weir removal, some of the fish tracking that's gonna be happening, the amount of species and biodiversity out there, it just blows my mind. I know from just the small projects that I've done in TV on rivers, how much work it takes just to get to the start line. So I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of those people that have collaborated and got involved to get you to this point. I can't wait to see what happens. And I think that you can make a success of this river here. It can be a blueprint for the things that we can do in rivers throughout Wales. Good luck. I can't wait to see what happens. Dee has been a very important river to me as a northwest Liverpool born and bred all my life. And now living in North Wales, it's still a very important part of our recreation and what we bring our friends to this part of the world to see. It's also got a deeply personal association. I'm always told by my mother, that's where my father proposed to my mother, on the Dee in a boat. And that's, for me, very poignant, I think. So this project rings all sorts of bells. And for me, seeing the amount of money you're investing in a way that's very different, the whole catchment approach, dealing with a whole raft of issues in a way that perhaps hasn't been done before by us as NRW, is very, very important. And also particularly talking to the community that lives alongside the river in all its former parts it clutches. Talking to them, understanding what they think, what they want, 
what they see as the future of the Mirror and what they want particularly to see us help improve. So thanks to all our partners, Welsh Government obviously, the Environment Agency, Snowdonia, Welsh Water and of course the European Union. I hope the project will be a great success. We're very confident of that and think it will make a huge difference to this part of Wales and also England. But most importantly, it's going to be an exemplar of the approach that we take in the future, using this whole catchment approach to change the way we look after things. So thanks for being part of the launch and look forward to seeing you on the deal in the near future. Hi, um, Borodar, good morning just about everybody. I'm really pleased to be able to join you just about um, today um, after a few technical hiccups on my part, but I am really pleased to join you for the uh, my first virtual online launch, virtual launch and to join the Life D River D project, better known as D Life today. Not just because it's such a, an amazing, exciting project, but also because um, I'm really proud to come from the corner of the country where the project is based. And really, I want to start by thanking um, Natural Resources Wales and all the partners who've been involved for organising this event and inviting us to participate as well in the launch of this really, really important work. The Environment Wales Act 2016 sets out the Welsh Government's commitment to managing our natural resources in a more joined up way and it introduces the nine principles of sustainable management and natural resources. This project puts those principles into practice in both its approach and its design and delivery. Working in partnership, combining knowledge and expertise across the whole of the special area of conservation is a reflection of this and an important part of the approach. The management of this special area of conservation and the network of other designated areas across Wales is an important part of helping improve ecosystem resilience right across Wales. We know that our landscapes and our natural resources are so important to each and every one of us in Wales and we are rightly proud of that beauty on our doorstep. But looking after them is not only essential to their intrinsic value of, of what they are, but also for the many benefits they provide to the people, places and communities of Wales. And I know firsthand that the decatchment is not only important for, for, for drinking water, for supplies and for farming, but it's also really important for connecting people to nature and support and health and well-being and making a contribution to enhancing fish stocks, as you've heard in the earlier presentations. A multidisciplinary approach is essential to deliver the project and to achieve multiple benefits. Now, the past six months or so have been uh, different and difficult for, for many of us. But during the pandemic lockdown period, we saw an increased appreciation for nature and its benefits, particularly trying to reach it on our doorstep. So connecting communities to our countryside, to our waterways and other green spaces will continue to be important as we live with and navigate through the recovery from the pandemic. So it means the work of, of land managers, the many hundreds and hundreds of volunteers right across the country and communities to improve our natural resources will be an important part of the green recovery here in Wales. Working with communities to better understand what people want from the natural environment should be central to inform the decisions you make in managing natural resources. I'm sure that the knowledge and experience gained across the partners in this project and others will be useful in informing the work of Sir David Henshaw and NLW that are taken forward through our Green Recovery Task Force. I'm really pleased that the D-Life project puts people at the heart of it and I look forward to hearing some of the events and the project that's planned and it's well into social and economically and surrounding communities in the weeks and months ahead. Working at catchment scale and improving resilience right across our ecosystems is also part of the action we need to take to mitigate the impacts and challenges caused by the changing climate. And it's also key to, resp to respond to the Welsh Government's ambition to be achieving zero carbon by 2050. I'm sure there's so much that we can learn from this project and I'm pleased that NLW and our partners are keen to establish an increased knowledge and understanding of the special area of conservation and its features. It's really important that the onus is on all of us to take collective responsibility for looking after our environment and working together to make sure we sustain those benefits for future generations. So I look forward to seeing the, the, the progress of the project and, and, and the stories from participants and all involved. And I hope that perhaps when we can get out and about a little bit more, I can come and see it for myself and get out and enjoy and appreciate our natural countryside and beauty on our doorstep a little more. 
Uh, this project is going to provide uh, legacy benefits, not just for the environment, but also the social, cultural and economic, economic benefits that we can achieve through working together. And we know that in Wales, when we work together, we achieve so much more. So that's why I'm particularly pleased to be here eventually today. And thank you very much for the invitation and all the best for the project ahead. Well, Diolfan Varian, uh, Hannah, um, and um, thank you for your support for, for the project and for, for NRW. Um, I too look forward to a point where you and I don't just bump into each other in the farm shop, but can actually go for a walk with the team and learn more about this amazing project. Um, we're coming to the end of, of today's online launch. And I'd just like to thank uh, Joel and the team uh, for all the work they have done and all the work that's still to come. Uh, to Will Millard, who is such a great supporter of this project, but also of NRW and its staff more generally. To all our partners who are here today, thank you very much indeed. And to all of you who've attended, I think we're starting on a journey together. And I think that will be an exciting and, and, and beneficial journey for this amazing river. This is the first time that I've done an online launch like this. And this is a new um, uh, system for us, the, the, the DigiLounge system. Um, I want to thank Louise and all the team at DigiLounge for, for, for supporting it. And thank you very much indeed. And I too, look forward to seeing you uh, in person in the future uh, to talk more about the D. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Thank you, Claire. Um, and I will be closing the stage now just to let everybody know the room will open be open until 12.30. So feel free to turn on your camera and microphone. You can double click to move tables and to be connected to other delegates in the room. And you can really have those face-to-face -face conversations. If you need any help, please use the general chat. But it's been a pleasure to help host the event today in the Digi Lounge. And we hope to see you all soon. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>